In the name of the Father, who gives us all we need for body and life, and of the Son, who bought us with his holy, precious blood, and of the Holy Spirit, who has called me by the gospel, and who keeps me in the one true faith. Amen. I will praise you, O Lord, with all my heart. I will tell of all of your wonders. I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will sing praise to your name, O Most High. You are my God, and I will give you thanks. You are my God, and I will exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Surely this is our God. We trusted in him, and he saved us. This is the Lord. We trusted in him. Let us rejoice and be glad in his salvation. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Don't be anxious about anything, but in everything, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. We have a responsive confession of sins. Join with me in the congregation part today. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we have been so richly blessed by you, yet we often fail to see or appreciate blessings that you give us throughout our days. We confess such times. We have gotten caught up in life and neglected the thanks that you deserve as the giver of all good things. Forgive us, Father, for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Dear Jesus, thank you for coming into the world to be our Savior. We confess the times. We have taken for granted just how much you endured in our behalf and all that you suffered to bring us forgiveness and life. Forgive us, Lord Jesus. Holy Spirit, you have called us to faith in Jesus and have continued to work in our hearts and lives to mold us into the people you have called us to be. We confess the ways we have failed to glorify you in our thoughts, words, or actions. Forgive us, Lord. Continue your sanctifying work within our hearts and lives. Although we have often forgotten that every blessing comes from God, God ever remains faithful to his covenant in which he promises, for I will forgive their wickedness and remember their sins no more. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I want, uh, for the, the few devotional minutes that we have here today, to, um, to encourage us with a, a three-dimensional perspective. Um, to use a three-dimensional perspective to inform and guide our thanksgiving. What I mean by three-dimensional is to, to look in three different directions. So, the three directions are to look up, to look back, and to look forward. And we'll come to those two Bible verses you see on your sheets throughout our encouragement here. So, as we talk about perspective, how, how do we look from above? If we're talking about from a human's ability to see, what happens when a person gets up to a perspective up high looking down? Take, take the example, how many people have been in an airplane? How many people in an airplane? Most people have been in an airplane, some maybe haven't, but if you get into an airplane and you, you start looking down as you start to go higher, what happens? The cars that are driving along the road, what do they, they begin to look like? They look small. Yeah, like, like look, they start to look like just the size of little matchbox cars that a child's playing with along a, a table. Um, you get up a little bit higher, and what happens to the, the houses? The, the houses become, they look like, they don't become, they, they look like the size of just, of just houses or hotels on a, on a board of a Monopoly game. You know what I mean? Have you, have you seen this before? And a person, when you get up that high, a person becomes nothing more than, than a speck. Yeah. Truly, we are only a speck when seen from the perspective of the physical place and size that we hold in the universe. But everything changes when you come and, and learn, you come to learn 
God's view of us. God's intimate, personal care and attention for each one of us is brought out across the Bible's pages in passages like the one from James that's in front of us. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights. Look up and know that the God who is above the heavens, who, who put the stars into their place in the universe, he sees you. And he cares for you. I've read recently a few lines that really, I think, fit well under this topic of God's intimate and personal care for each one of us. I want to share some thoughts from, the, from what I've read. God thought of you before he made the world. God loved you then, and he loves you still. God, who governs all things by his might, looks down with longing on the speck of dust that you and I are in an incomprehensible yearning for eternal fellowship with you, he became man. He, God the Son, came and he lived and he suffered and he died. He rose and he ascended, returning again to where his, by his, by, for all eternity he was before this world ever existed. To do what? To plead our cause before divine justice. To hold up what he did on his cross as the payment already made for our sins. And then to govern all things in heaven and on earth, just so that you might hear the message, believe it, and get to spend eternity with him, our God, forever. And then, he still attends to the smallest details of your life, to give you fleeting but delightful moments of pleasure as you journey on your way to that perfect home with him. He provides, he provides tasty meals, like, like by the campfire or tomorrow at our Thanksgiving meal. He makes your, he makes your heart beat with joy at things like, like holding a, a newborn child in your arms. He takes your breath away from seeing things like the top of a, a mountain. Some of us were talking about that. Um, hiking up mountains, the top of a mountain, or hearing the ocean. He puts you in awe of his genius when you consider how all the different details of the creation that he made fit together and work perfectly the way he designed them. And then, with all that beauty and all that wonder and all that awe, he says in effect, I made this all for you. Still, you haven't seen anything yet. Be grateful and enjoy it, but the best, the incomparably better awaits you when you get home to life eternal. That Bible verse from James that we heard the first part of, it goes on in describing God's goodness to us with this description. He does not change like shifting shadows. Here's where, in addition to looking up, looking back, the perspective of looking back, gives us encouragement for our thanksgiving. What in looking back helps us with thanksgiving for our present? This might especially be helpful when you come to times of difficulty or times of uncertainty in the, the present. At such times, be encouraged by looking back and seeing the track record of our God, the faithfulness to his word. He does not change. And so with the view looking back, seeing his tr perfect track record of always keeping his promises, you have the absolute assurance you can count on him and on his word. He doesn't promise a life without trouble. In fact, he says in this world you will have trouble, but he also promises he'll remain with you through all of it. He promises through circumstances in life, though they can change and they will change, there will be times of loss. There will be times of pain. He promises nothing in all creation through that will be able to separate you from his love. The forgiveness of sins and peace that are ours in Jesus, through faith in Jesus, that, that remains yours through both the good and the bad that comes in days of life. And even death will not be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. That truth 
that takes us to our, our last perspective that we want to talk about. We've already been talking about it, but looking, looking forward, a perspective that looks forward. And our other Bible passage is this, give thanks to the Lord, for He is good, His mercy endures forever. It's a, it's a passage that is spread across multiple psalms when you get to the Bible book of psalms. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good, His mercy endures forever. So as we look forward, as we look forward to celebrations tomorrow, to your Thanksgiving gatherings, and anticipate the, the good stuff that we'll enjoy. Call out answers that come to mind for this. I'm giving thanks to God for, as you think ahead to the celebration tomorrow, what do you think of when you hear that? I'm giving thanks to God for, call it out. Food. Food. Family. Family. You can get more specific at food. Pets. What? what? Pets. Pets. Food. Family. Okay, so some of those things. Um, Good things in life are given by God for us to enjoy. So, so do, do enjoy them as given by Him. But as we do, let's also be mindful not to go so, get so occupied with the present that you or I would lose and get, get distracted from the forever perspective. Give thanks to the Lord for He is good. His mercy endures forever. A message I recently listened to really sunk in about a, about a forever perspective and how important it is to have, have this in our view, a, a looking forward to forever. Let me share some thoughts. One thought, one thought is for those who, who maybe are still unsure about God. If you are here maybe because, um, because you're here with someone else who's a, a regular here at our gatherings or maybe um, because of an ongoing search, you're searching for answers, but you're still not sure about the different truths that we've talked about here tonight, or you still don't feel you really know what to believe, the encouragement I'll give you at this moment and going forward is this. Think of forever. Forever. We're, we are hearing the greatest news that any human ears could possibly hear when we're hearing the offer that Jesus gives us of forever. To be happy, not just not just as we, we have the campfire and have wonderful food, not just as we have Thanksgiving celebrations, but to be happy forever. To, to never be worried or afraid, but forever be at peace. For the, the Christian message is not just a, a program or a plan of how to, of how to improve life. Like, if, if you get gratitude in your heart, then, then your mental health is going to improve. But there are studies that are showing that. But, but that's not the point of the Christian message. God wants so much more for you than that. There's so much more that God has for you than that. He offers you a, a forever, a forever of, of life and peace with God, uninterrupted joy. That's what Jesus, God the Son, came to secure. And that's what God gives to all who trust in His Son. So if you're not sure... Um, isn't it worth investigating this if it's if it's forever? If you have questions about about what what God's like, if you have questions about why, like like why like why do troubles come to God's people if to good people if if God's Almighty? Those are good questions. Isn't it worth investigating? And don't just this was the encouragement given. Don't just go to Google and search. Find somebody that you know who's looked into these things. And has looked into the Bible to hear God's answers and can share those answers with you because we're talking about forever. Here's the final word I want to share for everyone tonight. Uh, there's so much in life that happens. There's your, there's your job and family, maybe, maybe kids. There are, there are friends and there are activities. There's so much in life. There will be a hundred different opportunities and more to make something else besides Jesus the number one spot in your priorities and heart. But none of them can offer you forever. 
The boss might be able to offer you more hours, and so you have more money, but your boss cannot offer you forever. You might, you younger ones, you might meet uh, that guy or that girl that is charming, and they're funny, and, and they're committed, like so few in our world today maybe fit that, that model, but if they don't help you get closer to God, then they can't, they can't give you forever. I thoroughly enjoy sports. I know some of you do too. I, I love to play sports. I like to watch sports. I, I watch our, our children do sports. But there is no game and there is no team, those of you who are sports fans of teams, there is no team that can offer you or me forever. And so I hope and pray that all of us hearing this message tonight would never get hustled or, or confused into thinking that temporary things are eternal or that eternal things are temporary. So perspective. Look up and know every good and perfect gift comes from the God above who loves us. Look back and know God does not change. And so you can, going forward, count on Him and His love. And knowing those, look ahead to forever. As ones who through faith in Jesus are God's dear children, give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His mercy endures Forever. Okay, a few more, a few more things for our devotion time tonight. There's a responsive prayer for us on your sheets. If you will turn there in the middle pages, responsive prayer underneath the devotion. I'll invite you to join with me in the bold parts. All good gifts are sent from heaven above, so we lift our hearts up to you, God, in praise and thanksgiving. As we count our blessings and acknowledge your goodness. We also are mindful of those who are experiencing sadness and loss. Be with them and bless them. We thank you for plentiful harvest and for the food you've provided for us. The abundance of the harvest points us to the abundance of your love in our lives. We thank you for providing the daily bread we enjoy, and we recognize the many instances where what you give us goes far beyond providing for our basic needs in life. We thank you for the family and friends who pour love and care into our lives, and we pray that you would bless others through the love you move us to show to them. In this season and all year long, give us thankful hearts so that we may acknowledge you as the giver of all that is good. Hear us, Lord, as we give you thanks for personal blessings. Above all else, Father, we thank you for sending your Son, Jesus Christ. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for bringing us to know, to know you through word and sacraments. Lead us to thank you in our lives, today and always. In the name of Jesus, we ask you. Amen. We're going to do this like we would be at the campfire and just sing this a cappella. So um, if you are familiar with the tune, join in right away. If you aren't familiar, you can listen a little bit and join in as you are able. Now thank we all our God with hearts and hands and voices who wondrous things has done in whom his world rejoices who from our mother's arms has blessed us on our way with countless gifts of love
make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look on you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. Thank you for being here. Thank you for bringing family with you. If you're from far away, I'm glad to see you. I hope we get to, to see you again. Um, join us anytime that we have gatherings here. Um, I think that's it. Anything else we need to let people know? If you left stuff outside, make sure you grab it or grab it next time you're here. Folding chairs. Some, okay, so, some folding chairs came in here. So go out the back way if you're looking for folding chairs, see if they're already in here. Keep them dry. Yeah, if it stopped raining, you might want to still grill s'mores. Um, you, you're welcome to stay out if the campfire's still going. Um, hang around for as long as you'd like. Thanks for being here. God bless you. Thanks, Kimmy. Of course, I don't think you'd think of it.